even though I look like I am not the height I'm supposed to be on this six foot fence, this is six foot from the bottom up. Obviously a coyote could jump here and probably freaking leap this whole entire thing. But from that side to this side, it is lower. But again, this section is protected by the dogs. They pee, they poop, they do all kinds of stuff around here. It looks like it's just one. It's a lone male probably just searching around for new property, new land to find some food. A coyote went over there and got one of the swans. A uh, wanted a meal, it took it, it killed it, and it got it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Today, you guys, we're gonna go look around the whole entire property because we have a situation happening inside of our neighborhood, and that is there's a very, very large predator, and we're gonna show you in the middle of this video what the predator could be. It really just looks like a really big dog, but it might be a canine of some sort, probably a coyote. So what we have to do is go look at a perimeter of our whole entire property because we got to see if we have any holes and make sure everything is secured and good so let's go do that so as soon as you walk through this gate right here you get passed through a six foot well this is almost like a seven and a half foot spot right here and no predators should come into this section area this is a contained area for all of my animals and everybody stays on this side see the cranes right here we have willie right here the crane jumps over the six foot fence back and forth but they all know not to go over there because we have all of our bullies our pit bulls that live on that side of the property so that area is pretty secured and no animals really like to go that section. But over here, there's not too many predators. Realistically, it's it's like Publix, it's like a grocery store. Why do I say it like that? Well, because there's turkeys, there's chickens, and there's ducks, things that a lot of humans do eat. And for these animals that are predators in the area, they smell these animals from miles away and they're like, wow, we wanna go eat. But when we come over here, I'll show you why they don't wanna come to from this section of the property for one reason. So realistically, Coyote wanted to come in real quick. He can definitely eat the crane, even though he acts like he is super mean and he wants to mess you up and everything. A coyote will be able to take him down without a problem. Willie, on another hand, is a very, very big pig. It would be a couple coyotes. But as you guys see right now inside of the clip, it looks like it's just one. It's a lone male probably just searching around for new property, new land to find some food. We come over here, we have the capybaras. The capybaras have the advantage, if it was a larger pond, they would run and dive into a very large pond and get away. This pond is not that big, but that's okay because again, they're safe in this area. And the same thing goes over here. We have a nice six foot fence that goes all the way around. Even though it's a little thick over there, if an animal walks up to it, it shouldn't be able to get through. Yes, coyotes still can jump over six foot fences, but in the area that I am located, they're not really used to that. Why? Because majority of the people in this area only have four foot fences. So unfortunately, what happened with our neighbor three houses down, they have a pond, they're new neighbors, they have ducks, they have swans, they have different sorts of things. And a coyote went over there and got one of their swans. They uh, wanted a meal, it took it, it killed it, and it got it. Swan is a big animal. So if it's taking down prey of this size, a lot of the birds here on the property is an issue. But with this dude right there, Oliver, hiding right there, even though he's a small little guy, his scent is very, very strong and he sprays and scents this whole entire area to keep the predators down. So let's say raccoons, possums, and coyotes, if they smell that, they're gonna be like, whoa, there's another male in this section that could be competition. Maybe we don't wanna risk ourselves to get hurt from whatever's on the other side of the fence. We can't see it. So it really does help to have Oliver over here spraying in this section to keep any of the animals coming from that way, this way, hopefully. That's our, that's our, you know, our hope. Then we go this way. When we come over here, it's just deer. Deer, realistically, coyote is gonna take down. So this section is not the safest spot, but again, it is a six foot area. They're safe, they're secured, and there's no holes whatsoever on the whole entire thing. They can't dig down, it's all rebar down, and it's strong and sturdy. My neighbor next to me has a real cleared area, so there's not really spots for them to hide ear either. So that helps out with all of being over there, kind of protects this whole section, and I think that really does help out. I saw a mother raccoon in the tree over there. We posted it before on TikTok. And when I saw it over there, it never came to my side of the property. Why? They probably smelt the otter and it knew that could have been a predator and she didn't want her babies to be in risk from another predator. Come this way. We still haven't moved all the tortoises and turtles yet, but in this section right here, it's gonna be a double fence, six to eight foot tall, high fence over here for our cassowaries. So this section is gonna be really, really protected as well. Why? If he jumps over a six foot fence and for some odd reason jumps over into the eight foot area with the cassowaries, they're gonna have no advantage inside of there whatsoever. Why? Because a cassowary is gonna kill a coyote if it goes inside of there. They will not like that whatsoever and then we're gonna have a dead coyote in there. So then that'll help the protection of the whole neighborhood a little bit better. Then we go a little bit more and as you guys know, on the other section down on that over there, it's in complete closed sealed area that is our aviary. So there's really no way for a coyote to get inside of there. They don't have 
the buck teeth like a squirrel or, or a rat or something like that they could chew through the net uh coyote's really not gonna be able to chew through it whatsoever especially not fast enough without me being able to see the situation but we do have one section of the whole entire property that i've noticed earlier this morning that we're gonna have to go fix so let me go show you and i'm just gonna say this just for some people out there obviously the monster fish and everything like that are protected from all the predators because they're inside a metal solid concrete building nothing can get in or out whatsoever so we're gonna move on to this way over here and the section that we are gonna be heading to is moor section it's the biggest animal section on the property but unfortunately there is one section that's a little bit lower and we do have benny over that should be the protector of the whole entire squad of animals over there but if this animal is very fast very strong obviously and very hungry they will do anything to eat so if she runs in there or he runs inside of there very fast benny might not be able to be fast enough to get this guy quick enough to potentially kill him or hurt him and he might grab an emu it could grab a rhea it could grab a chicken I would rather it grab a chicken than a rhea or an emu but unfortunately if it does happen what would happen is it would probably grab it by the neck mother nature will do its course she will kill it he will kill it probably won't have time to eat it whatsoever because benny's gonna be on it so quick but i am going to lose that animal because of the coyote and then we have fergie over here our pit bulls they walk around this section of the property so being from this section of the property the whole front end coming this way protected from all the pea smells and the poop smells of the pit bull so that helps from over there so if you're noticing what i'm talking about is that section over there is protected by the otters that section over there is protected by the cassowary that section over there protected by the aviary and that section over there well is protected by benny hopefully so i planned everything out pretty pretty well even emus are known to kill dogs i just don't think my emus would do absolutely anything fergie's hunting right now she's searching for lizards making sure her her i don't know come here fergie her property is just, you know, all good and good. Right, big girl? She's a good, she's a good protected dog here on the property. Out of all the bullies, I would say she's the best listener out of all of them in a way. She's the best one. She's Tyson and Snooky's uh, daughter that we kept. And she's awesome. She's a good little mama. Good girl, right? Good little girl. Good, good girl. So she's a good protector. She uh, she doesn't like, she doesn't like male men. She doesn't like garbage men, UPS or FedEx whatsoever. But that's okay. Or Amazon drivers. That's, that's her most hated type of uh cars and vehicles or if a car turns on see she acts like she's a big baby if you come on the property you might like lose a couple fingers all right let me go show you where this freaking hole is at whatever the situation we're having even though i look like i am not the height i'm supposed to be on this six foot fence this is six foot from the bottom up obviously a coyote could jump here and probably freaking leap this whole entire thing but from that side to this side it is lower but again this section is protected by the dogs they pee they poop they do all kinds of stuff around here and that you know saves the area so we're gonna walk into this section now so on this section we have a couple of advantages one benny he's a mini donkey he's fast he got a big set of teeth in there and he got a big nice butt to kick some coyotes without a problem right that's number one number two we have a lone guinea fowl that walks around here with his two girlfriends in the back so he's on high alert 24 7 making sure no predators come around if any dog of any sort comes over here they take off, they scream, they warn everybody to be on high alert and protect everybody. That's the good thing to have a lot of animals to make sure everything's good. When another one of my dogs from another part of the property comes to this section that they're not used to, all the goats. Furs up, they look like they have mohawks. Everyone's acting different, everyone's acting weird. But when we come over here, we always talk about to that side, we have six foot, like this whole side of the property over here is backed up to a really big lot. And that big lot over there is empty. No houses, no nothing there. Very, very high chance for an animal to want to hide over there. Over here, look at this. Completely buried a foot and a half down underneath the ground over here. And that is completely sealed all the way around. There's no way whatsoever for a coyote to jump over at eight foot fence. I don't think there's any record of that. Um, now, obviously, if there's something on the other side, they could jump over, climb over, yes. But there's nothing there. There's no trees around the area. A fox, a raccoon, a possum, yes, they could climb over. But a coyote will not be able to do that. So we're going to just walk the fence line. And this is what I'm telling you. I, you have to walk your fence line to check everything out. If you're not looking at things all the time, you're not going to know what's going on. The emus are very, very, always, they're predator animals. In the wild where they come from, Australia, they have dingoes. Packs of dingoes will come in. Sometimes they're able to beat them up. The emus group is called a mob, a big group of mob of emus around and they will take down you know a couple of dingles without a problem but you know one dingle will be able to grab it sometimes and stuff will happen but as you can see the rias the emus 
they hang around donkeys. This area is a very large area. They're going to get protected. Even Moors will protect her, her. These are her friends. She knows these are her friends. So she'll do what she has to do to protect them. And then look, we have Fergie walking the fence line on that side. So no animal is really going to come over there because of that situation. Same thing though. Very low down and deep under. We're going to keep on coming this way. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. High fence. No way. I'm only 5'8 all the way to the top. That's an eight foot high fence right there. Nothing's getting inside of here whatsoever. But again, here we go. The one section that we're gonna have a situation. And that is right here. Right here, you guys. This is my only part that I am a little nervous about right here. Is this little section right here. Coyotes can fit through small gaps. They can't. They're just, they're, they're predators. They're, they're main, they, they can live anywhere. If you think you don't have coyotes in your backyard or in your property or in your county or in your city, well, you're wrong. There is coyotes in the big cities, the small cities, in every single state, county thing, everywhere in the United States. They're everywhere. And one really crazy thing about coyotes as well is if you hear them howling, all they're doing is making sure more coyotes come in. They're just looking. Here comes Moors, checking out what's going on. But the one advantage I wanted to tell you guys is my ground here is very compact, really good. We have concrete here as well, so they won't be able to dig more. So what we'll probably end up doing here to make this secured is just Moors. add more stone right here. We had a couple more of these big stones all up against the side will be good. But the only reason why I kept this area like this is because this is the only way in and the only way out for a coyote. So if a coyote does come inside of here, nice, nice hand. If a coyote does come inside of here, it's not gonna be able to come out. And unfortunately, my animals are going to get a hold of them very fast. It's not gonna remember how they got back over here and to get out fast enough. Benny's gonna grab that thing and unfortunately probably put it out of its misery. My parents' house is right here. My sister's room is around the corner. Everyone's all around right here and they'll hear what's going on. And then um, it's not gonna be a pretty sight after the coyote comes into our property. If he's on the outside of the property, I don't care. Live his best life. Go find all of the raccoons. Go find the feral cats that shouldn't be outside killing all of our native birds all around all the time. Um, what else? You know, eat what they have to eat. But you know, unfortunately, our square, we want to protect it as best as we can. So that's why I did this. My giant, huge, long fence line right here of high fencing so we don't have no situation whatsoever. But look, everybody looks great. Everybody looks amazing. And luckily, fingers crossed, we don't get any coyotes. Again, three houses down, there is a coyote in the area. I had another buddy of mine. I literally read you what he said. One second. Yesterday, he said, hey buddy, don't know if anybody told you this, but the coyotes got the neighbor swan on Friday and they have been coming back every day since. So keep an eye out. I said, I heard. He's like, I think I might have to go army style and go on top of the roof and get this guy. I said, it's all you buddy. It's not me. Uh, predators are here first. It's all right. It's fine. Let the predators do what they got to do. Just protect your own land and that's it. So if the new neighbors would like to learn a little bit about what I've learned in the past, we've had a coyote problem here before back then. We had a coyote come in once and kill two goats, but that was before we had tall fences. That was way before we had a bunch of dogs. Well, we had all the animals, but that's it. Uh, other than that, you guys, that's the situation we're happening here on the ranch right now. We have a coyote issue in the area, but we are very, very close to getting all of the tortoises moved over. We're just waiting for this one more gate to come in. As you guys saw in the last video, make sure you're staying on point with everything that's going on. Benny boy, we got a video coming up tomorrow for you guys too. Live Wednesdays, every Wednesday, our fish video. Um, we're gonna be going diving inside of there because we have to clean the windows and all that cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. If you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, put your post notifications on. And if you guys are interested in any turtles on tortoises, blakesexoticanimalranch.com and then Blake's Exotic Feeders. If you guys have any kinds of animals, birds of prey, small mammals, big mammals, crocodilians, snakes, lizards, any of that cool stuff that wants to eat quail, very, very good protein item to vary your diet for your animal needs. Hit me up on Instagram. We'll get that shipped out to you. Other than that, you guys, last time, thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.